Adjustments for stroke of both the center tool slide and the two longitudinal slides are behind this hatch cover. Once the positive stop screws have been backed off, jog the machine to the high point of the feed stroke. Your layout sheet will indicate the settings for the center tool slide and the longitudinal slides. The center tool slide is located in the middle. The longitudinal slide serving the fourth position is located here. The adjustment for the longitudinal slide serving the fifth position is located here. Once the clamp bolts are loosened, the linkage can be placed at the proper setting. With the machine at high point, you can now set the cross slide stroke. On the A side of the machine, you will find the cross-slide stroke adjustment mechanism for the fifth, sixth, and first positions. The adjustment linkage for the second, third, and fourth positions are located on the B side of the machine. To adjust the setting block, you must first loosen the clamp nut. The block can then be positioned... stock stop, loosen the two nuts on the top and bottom of the casting. The stop can now be moved to its proper position. With the cutoff tool positioned and the stock stop set, you can now set the amount of stock feed required. Measure from the stock stop to the spindle face. You will set the stock feed mechanism to 1 16th of an inch more than the measurement taken. The procedure for setting the amount of stock feed is shown in drawings on the inside of the hatch cover. You must first move the guide ring and the out of stock mechanism back. You must loosen three bolts. The third bolt is at the bottom of the guide ring. The out of stock mechanism can now be slid back. You may need to go to the other side of the machine to tap back the guide ring. Now jog the machine to cause the stock feed slide to move all the way back. Loosen the locking nut and move the bar feed lever to the total measurement figured earlier. The scale on the arc indicates the amount of feed in both inches and metric. Lock down the holding nut securely once the proper dimension has been set. Push your assemblies and... holder and tighten the bolt to secure it. The back portion of this drill holder has a fitting which can be used to connect to the coolant supply. Some drills will have coolant holes drilled through their shanks. These holes will supply coolant to the tip of the drill during cutting. This is a floating holder normally used for reaming. The floating holder allows the reamer to center itself in the hole. This is a circular form tool. The shape of the part to be formed can be seen in the outline of the tool. To set up the form tool, first assemble the tool onto the circular tool holder. The locating pin must be placed into one of the holes in the tool. The centering plate can then be mounted. Be sure all the surfaces are clean before mounting the tool.
Mount the circular form tool onto the clamp bolt and tighten. The centering plate should be positioned to contact the centering screw. The purpose of the centering screw is to bring the cutting edge of the tool to the center line of the bar stock. Two different types of tool holders are required. Each is designed for particular positions on the machine. These are the T-bolts. The T-portion of the bolt slides into the keyways in the cross slide. Before mounting the first position tool to the cross slide, be sure the mounting surface of the tool holder and the cross slide are thoroughly clean. Do not tighten down the holding bolts at this time. Back off the cross slide depth adjustment control. Load one bar into position six. Start the machine and stop it after the bar has indexed into position one. By using the position of the cutoff blade as a reference, you can properly locate the first position form tool longitudinally on the cross slide. Once the position is properly set, tighten the holding bolt securely. This is the tool centering gauge. To use this gauge, place the gauge on the clean surface of the cross slide. Loosen the tool clamp bolt. The cutting edge of the circular form tool must meet the top of the centering gauge in order to have the form tool properly centered to the bar stock. Use the adjusting screw to bring the tool to center. Always move the tool in the opposite direction of bar rotation as your final adjustment. In this case, the cutting edge must be moved upward since the bar is moving down into the cutting edge. When the cutting edge is flush with the gauge surface, the tool is properly centered and the tool clamp bolt can be tightened. Remember, some tools may be moved down to reach center. Always move the tool in the opposite direction of bar rotation as your final centering adjustment. For those cross slides that are producing the final dimensions of the part, you will be required to use the following procedure to set positive stop tension. Run the machine to the high point of the cross slide stroke and stop the feed. With the spindles turning, advance the tool into the work using the cross slide depth adjusting control. Continue to advance the tool into the work until you cut the part three to five thousandths of an inch under correct part size. in the drive unit that will also be changed. To remove the gears, first remove the cover of the drive unit by loosening these two screws. The bottom gear is the driver gear and the top gear is the driven gear. The driver gear is called the A gear and the driven gear is called the B gear. Loosen the holding nuts to remove the gears. All gears will be marked with their size. Be sure you mount them in the correct location. 